This is my island. These are my people. And this is our life. I like Kuvalu because it's a land where I was born and I grew up there and I never want to leave Tuvalu. Our ancestors settled these islands 3,000 years ago. They lived off the land, growing their own crops and tending to their livestock. They fished in the sea and we do the same. At the end of the day, we rest just as they did. Tuvalu, like any other country, is uh, dear to its citizens. And we are very friendly people. We live in peace. You can sleep with the doors uh, unlocked and be assured that you, you, you get up in the morning to a nice sunrise and to a happy smile by anybody who passes you by. Recently, our little island has been introduced to globalization. Aloha! Aloha! I think so many things changed in Tuvalu. I see, when I was little, our land so many trees and like this, but now we have so many buildings and I can see also the, the land, some place is missing. What once was a calm and quiet place has grown busy with traffic, people and construction. Tuvalu struggles to keep pace with these changes. My name is uh, Peteli Paulo and I'm a school teacher with uh, Tuvalu. I was doing my postgraduate certificate in education when I was recruited by the director of education here in, in Tuvalu to come and teach. They have great potential, these students have, but uh, the thing that's holding them back at best is the uh, availability of, of resources to help them be the real students and show their actual potential. It has always been my dream to come back to Tuvalu and give something back because I'm Tuvalu.
the Pacific Island nation of Tuvalu, nowhere is higher than five meters above sea level. Tuvalu's nine atolls and islands are home to 12,000 people. Their contribution to global warming is tiny, but its impact on them is massive. Sea walls are the nation's only defense, but building higher walls is likely to prove futile. During big spring tides, seawater simply bubbles up through the ground. In 2006, the islanders experienced their highest tides ever. These islands could soon become uninhabitable. The seawater is poisoning the soil and groundwater. Eventually, the islands may have to be evacuated. This would be an unprecedented move an entire nation relocated. The thing most important to them, Tuvaluans are trying to deal with this situation as best they can, raising houses and gardens above the water table and trialling salt-resistant crops. Man-made seawalls help support and even reclaim land, while communities are planting mangroves to encourage fish breeding and prevent soil erosion. I think we just have to get more land and put soil on top. Be innovative and be adaptive and think of ways to actually, you know, build on um, the good that you can actually change things to the better. Faith also gives the people of Tuvalu strength. On Sundays, the nation stops. Roads close communities unite and the vast majority of the population connects with its Christian beliefs. Most of our people, they pray that God is the, is the answer for their survival uh, in time of uh, yeah, catastrophes. Most Tuvaluans understand the scientific reality but a minority of churchgoers believe God will save them, citing a covenant he made with Noah, promising no more floods. Well, I have to tell my people that climate change is real. What is happening today is because of the human activities. But sometimes people think that they, it's the end, the end is coming. But it's not the right way to say that. It's not the end. But it's a wake-up call to us. Tuvaluans have always understood they are vulnerable and have an age-old word that empathises with those who have no land. Fakalofa, something that felt in your heart. What am I going to do to help these people? Tuvalu is just like that. <laughs>